Hi everyone, today we are in the boiler room in our customer's house. In this video we are going to talk about smart heat utilization from mining equipment. We will analyze all the details of integrating the installation into the heat supply system. We will also explain how it all works, how it all looks and most importantly we will analyze how the entire system performs in summertime. First, I want to say a few words about the installation itself. It's designed for 24 ASICs with a total heat output of 30 kW. At the moment we have only one cell working. It contains 6 ASIC S9 units, overclocked to 20 terahashes per second. It's about 2 kW of heat output per device. In the future, the cells will be loaded as well, but with less powerful devices, as far as I remember, for Litecoin mining. Also, I want to note that the rack is bundled with a dry cooling tower. In order to heat the house and get hot water from the tap, you only need to integrate our rack into the heating system of your house. There can be many options for the integration itself, and they may differ from each other, since everything depends on the heat supply system and its purposes. Generally, it all comes down to correctly linking the external rack cooling circuit and an existing or planned heating system. As I said, at the moment we have one cell loaded, there are 6 Essex inside, with a total heat power of about 12 kW. This capacity is already enough for heating or other hot water supply needs of a house of 120 square meters. In order to make it clear, explanations are divided into two parts. The first will relate to the rack cooling, let's call it the cooling tower circuit. The second part will be about the heat supply system itself, which is implemented in one way or another in each house. Basically, we can separate heat system from the rack by these cranes, cranes that separate the heat supply system from the rack. By shutting them off, we can directly discharge heat into the environment through the cooling tower, but we also need to open the bypass crane. Also, I want to make a point. Assembling and bundling of cooling tower as well as the connection of this circuit to the heating system of the house were performed by ordinary workers, plumbers, who connected up the heating system in the house of the customer. Of course, there are some mistakes here. For example, they made a very small center-to-center -center distance and the cranes interfere with each other when opening, but the valves were fixed, so now there is no problem to open them. The circuit itself goes further into the utility room, so let's move there and see how everything is arranged. The circuit is separated by an intermediate heat exchanger, which we are going to see. Here is the heat exchanger. What is circulating on one side? This is the rack and the heat supply system. And, as the cooling tower is located outside, and in the cold season, as there are negative temperatures, in the cooling tower circuit there is acetylene glycol in the appropriate concentration, depending on the minimum temperature outside. Also, a circulation pump and a safety group are installed in the glycol circuit, expansion tank, manometer, safety valve, and filling valve. And the cooling tower is located outside. Let's have a look. Here is the actual cooling tower itself, which discharges heat into the environment. 
As I said, the installation of the cooling tower, the circuit of the cooling tower, and the integration of the rack into the heat supply system of the house were carried out by ordinary plumbers, who previously made the house heating system for our customer. It turns out that there is nothing complicated, everything is quite simple if you know what to do. There is another point regarding the circuit of the tower, which I want to mention. The functioning of the circuit and rack occurs in standalone and automatic modes. The implementation scheme is so simple that all control is done with a frequency converter that controls the cooling circuit pump and the fan using a temperature sensor. Now, let's move on the second part, our heat supply system. As you can see, it consists of a gas boiler, quite good by the way, Weissman. It has independent automation, solid equipment to be honest, a hydraulic separator, collector, pump groups and an indirect heat boiler. Each pump group is responsible for a certain heating circuit, floor heating, convectors and radiators. The lower group works to load the boiler. Through pipes coming from the group, we see that they are connected to the spiral of the boiler. The pump group for radiators is responsible for heating the outbuildings. It works separately from the boiler automation using third-party automation, which is located a little higher on the wall. Here we can see the temperature in the heating circuit. It's 58 degrees. The entire heating system is controlled by boiler automation. It's self-sufficient and regulates the heat supply system. Heating level is regulated by the outside temperature, domestic hot water, upon the request of the boiler temperature sensor. The boiler itself and the rack are connected to the heat supply system in parallel, which means that they can complement each other if necessary, or work separately from each other. As you can see, from the place where the pipeline is connected to the rack, the connection is between the boiler and the hydraulic separator. So, let's call it a non-conflict operation of two devices, which is achieved using the EA1 expansion module, which is connected to the boiler automation, and if the rack gives enough thermal energy for the needs of the house, prevents the boiler from turning on. If, for any reason, the thermal capacity of the rack is not enough, the boiler turns on. At the same time, the rack continues to function. Now on the automation display and on the pump groups we can see how it all works and what the heat supply parameters are. At the same time, I want you to make sure that everything is real and that it all works. So the boiler automation display. We go into the menu and look at the system parameters. We have general parameters. Here is the temperature according to the external sensor, the temperature of the boiler, and here is the general flow temperature. We see 56 degrees, a little bit lower. Apparently, heat is taken by different systems. The burner is off, as you can see. We go back to the counter of the convectors. They should be turned off. Yes, only domestic hot water system is on. The only thing, the customer, as far as I remember, said that he switched on the counter of the warm floors because it's getting cold at night. Yes, heating and hot water is on. But at the moment the circuit pump is turned off. The mixer is closed, which means they are not working now. Let's look at the hot water temperature. It's 32 degrees, which is pretty low. The boiler loading pump is on. Accordingly, there was a flow of hot water from the boiler. The water temperature dropped, the sensor detected it, turned the boiler load sensor on. 
Right now we can check it on the pump group. Here you can even see the temperature. Well, the sensor shows a bit less than what the boiler automation sensor detects, which is located in the hydraulic arrow. In boiler automation, obviously, the info is more accurate. Well, the heated floor pump is off, as I said, according to boiler automation. We see that the temperature starts to rise. Now, let's see the settings of domestic hot water system temperature. It's 48 degrees. Here the customer said 48 degrees. Apparently, this temperature is enough for him. It's also worth noting that the boiler itself is of very large capacity, about 400 liters. For a house of 120 square meters, for a small family, this is quite a large capacity. Well, here, with the example of real equipment and the functioning heat supply system, you could see how smart heat utilization from mining equipment may be. Now, let's speak about the profit. Knowing the heat loss of a house or the data on the fuel consumption, in this particular case it's gas, knowing the need for hot water, the parameters of the boiler and fuel, we can use the calculations to determine the savings that are achieved through smart heat utilization. About 44,527 kilowatts per hour of energy or 6,562 cubic meters of natural gas are consumed to cover the heat supply needs per one year in the house of about 120 square meters, which at current tariff of 5.8 cents during the heating season and 20 cents in the summer will amount to $570 in cash. This $570 will be the saved part, which was achieved thanks to immersion mining. If an electric boiler was used as a heat source, then in this case, with the current tariff for electric energy and 3.7 cents, the savings would be $1,648. That's it. If you still have some questions left, Write them down below in comments. Subscribe to our channel. Bye!